Hello there hobbyists and engineers, I hope you guys are doing absolutely fine. In today's video tutorial, we will make a quadcopter drone. Yes, we will make a quadcopter drone. So let's get started with this tutorial. Let's start this project by first building a frame and then we will solder the electronics. Number three, we will complete our configuration and take this entire quadcopter for a test flight. Now if you are thinking about making your own frame for a quadcopter, it can be expensive and not time efficient. So I didn't want to make my own quadcopter frame. I just got a DJI's F550 frame kit. It comes with this truss arms and uh, it has two plates, mounting plates and few bolts. So if you notice closely on this mounting plate, the bottom plate has power distribution board inbuilt on this uh, part. You just have to solder this pads and uh, this is really super convenient. So let us keep this bottom plate aside and let's start with assembling the arms and the top plate. We will use a Allen screwdriver for mounting this to our frame. Now let's talk about the power unit of this entire build which is motors. For this specific build we are using A2212 that is a brushless DC motor. We could have used brushed motors too but uh, this is an aerial vehicle and it has to be running on a battery which has to be super super efficient. So using brushed motors can get a little tricky because it consumes a lot of power and this brushless motors are quite efficient in that way. Uh, if you notice closely. Our frame has mounting plates which coincide with our uh, motor's mounting plate. So that is very convenient. We'll just bolt them out using Allen bolts and a screwdriver. So yeah, let's start that. We will need some kind of speed controller to control our motors because we cannot go full throttle on our quadcopters, right? So we will use this Simon K 30 ampere speed controller in this project build and we will require four of them, four similar kind of speed controllers to control our motors. And uh, this is the bottom plate that we discussed before and we will solder the positive and negative terminals of each ESC to this positive and negative. Remember, the black one is negative and red one is positive. So we will just use soldering iron and solder each of this on the bottom plate.
once the power distribution board is soldered it's time to put together the frame uh, we will just use some allen bolts to connect this bottom plate to the rest of the frame and also we will add few landing gears to be safe while landing during the beta test of course so yeah let's jump right into it After the frame is completed, it's time to connect the face wires with the motor driver. For now, we will just connect it in random sequence. We will correct it later in the further steps. Also, we will use zip ties to tidy up our connections and we will be good to go. At this point our entire frame structure is almost complete, the mechanical part is almost over. But what about the signals, what about the controlling part, how would the motor know what intensity it should spin at, how would we control the speed, direction and all. And in this specific build we are using a KK 2.1.5 flight controller. So it is this cute little board which has an LCD and few buttons to configure it. At this point you guys might simply use a double sided tape and stick it on a frame but let me tell you one thing this board has accelerometer gyroscope inbuilt on it so mounting it directly on the quadcopter frame might be a little risky because there are lots of vibrations and other factors that can affect your uh, that can affect your signaling and entire processing part of the board so I would recommend you guys to use a anti-vibration pad which will basically isolate the like you can see it right here it will basically isolate any kind of vibrations or it will even electrically isolate the entire flight controller which is very very helpful in our situation so we will use double sided tape on the back of the anti-vibration pad and also on the back of this KK2.0 and we will simply stick it
once we have connected our flight controller on the chassis it is time to understand the connections on the left side we have output pins on the right side we have input pins this output pins are connected to the esc signal wire and the out input pin is connected to our radio receiver talking about the radio receiver we are using a fly skies fs ct 6b model which is a six channel transmitter receiver so this receivers aileron and all those channels will be connected to the input of our flight controller okay and now on the output side we are connecting the flight controller uh, the esc this esc has three color coded wires if you can see closely we have white red and black white one is signal pin red one is a uh, 5 volt and the black one is ground the way this esc the way this flight controller is set up you just have to connect the white wire inside and rest every polarity will be taken care of do not reverse polarize it it can be fatal but remember white one comes inside even for the receiver part white one comes inside and there is a small marking on the flight controller board there is an arrow that shows the front direction of the flight con of this flight so in my case it is like this between the red arms so i will name this motor or this arm as arm number 1 arm number 2 arm number 3 and arm number 4 so i'll connect the outputs of the motor as 1 2 3 and 4 so let me show this connections to you Once we have completed our connections, it is time to choose a battery or you know understand what kind of battery we are using. We can use many options like lithium ion, lithium polymer etc. But since we are making a drone, we need the best power to weight ratio. So the lithium polymer has best power to weight ratio and the one specific that I am holding in my hand is 2200 mAh battery. It is a 3S that is 11.1 volt lithium polymer battery so yeah it has a 25c discharge capacity and we will pretty much use this one with a balanced charger so we will use a t connector with a thick wire and we will solder it on a power distribution board which will entirely power this drone and i would never recommend you guys to add a switch because uh, this thing can take up to 120 amperes and i'm not sure if the switches that you guys use are up to that mark I will rather use it connected and disconnect this uh, T connector whenever I need it. I am not adding a switch in this specific build. Okay, so we will just solder this wires on the power distribution board and we are good to go. So guys after the connections are done it's time to just check it out if this thing is working or not if everything is as decided I just hope nothing explodes in my hand and that's a beep of wisdom of success and nothing exploded it says safe 
but it is not yet configured so we will configure this entire quadcopter and flight controller and everything so stay tuned to the next video hit the subscribe and notification buttons so that you don't miss that video and uh, if you like this video give this video a thumbs up share it with your friends and don't forget to subscribe why don't you guys subscribe just hit it it's free just subscribe to my channel and we will see you guys in the next one bye bye